Hi, right, Tom here. Welcome back. We're going to be creating a full stack application which can serve as the foundations for a full product that you build. So we're going to be using Vue.js as our front end and then Django as our back end and making them talk together. We'll also add auth, done nicely, ready for you to use in production. And there'll also be five other things you're pretty much always going to need when setting those up. Let's get into it. And this is a real background, by the way. So having a lovely sunny day. So we'll be following the written guide here that I've prepared and is in link in the description below, as well as a link to my mailing list. And a little comment there on, on Vue versus React. First, we'll set up Django into our terminal, and then we're gonna do pip install, which it really works here, Django and Django cores headers. We need Django cores headers to let Django, our backend, receive requests from our front end to allow them in. Okay, we've installed that. Now we're gonna copy this in, taking a paste, okay. Cool, and so this, we've just set up our Django project, which I've called Core, in our, and you'll see it pop up here. And then we've also created a new app called Sim. I just use Sim as my convention. And now let's register Sim, our new app, in settings to your core slash settings, and then go down to install apps, in, and then just type in Sim. We need to add the core's middleware here. So copy this, and then add it here into middleware. I normally put it at the top. The position matters. Make sure you to add that, otherwise it won't work. Now we want to add our cores credentials. So we can add these in anywhere. So just paste that in. Let me get rid of this and explain. So this means we, we will send credentials with our requests. And this is where our front end will be running when you set up a front end most of the time is the port 5173, whereas Django most of the time is 8000. But change this if you're not on that default for some reason, you probably will be. And this allows back end, the back end Django to take requests from this path. Now we'll update our core URLs to add a sim. So go to core URLs, just paste this over the top to include our sim URLs. And then we're gonna create our sim URLs. So go into the sim folder and then create urls.py and paste it in. And you can see we're gonna have these routes, set CSRF token, login, log out, user, register. You could actually just move API up to here and then remove it from here. We'll leave it for the moment, it's fine. A little bit of duplication. Okay, now we're gonna create our first form, first and only form actually, in Sim. After we receive data from the front end, we're gonna validate it on the back end in Django and then create a user, register a user. So go to Sim and then create a, a, fol a file in Sim called forms.py, paste this in, create user form. We'll take an email, a password. We're gonna use the default Django user, but it always has a username and a password. I like having them be the same thing because I think it's confusing to remember username or password. So I just set the username here when we save the user to the person's email and then set their email to their email as well. Okay, now let's update our sim views. So go to views there, close this, and then we can paste this in and I'll walk you through what each does in a succinct, hopefully a succinct way. So here, we're gonna set the CSRF token. So CSRF token, I actually will not go into details, look it up, there's great documentation. Essentially it stops a particular type of malicious attack if you are already logged in and have your session cookie on your browser and then you visit another site and they try and attack you. So, but this is a method to set it on our front end. Then we have this one to log in, which yeah, well, the front end will send JSON here. We then get the JSON out, get the data out, check it's valid, authenticate, see if there is actually a user and then I, and then log the user in. This is a bit of Django magic here. This might be unclear. This login actually also sets a session cookie on the user's browser, even though you can't see it. This session cookie acts, uh, has information about who the user is and actually, which is stored in the database, but this is all built into Django. And we're actually gonna be using that, which is much nicer than other more complicated auth methods where you have to create a token. We're just gonna be using what the Django way. So this logs in the user if you've given them valid data. Log out, kind of like the inverse. Again, a bit of magic there, because you can't really see what it does, but it actually will, actually this is a really good explanation. Remove the authenticated user's ID from the request and flush their session data. Well done, Django docs. I wonder if there's similarly, yeah. Okay, that, I should have said that. Persist a user ID and backend in the request that using a session cookie, uh, which is done for you. So user here, we're gonna get the user data just simply to access some data that you need in, if you're logged in to prove that our auth is working. At request.user, we're accessing the user in the database using that session cookie. Don't worry, you don't need to know too much of this. I'm just giving it to you for extra context. And then here, register. We send some data, use our create user form that we just created in forms.py. If it's valid, then we run the save method, which is there. 
and return a successful user or return errors if not. And now let's continue. So that's Django set up. Let's set up view. Okay, so open another terminal. The front end view is going to be running essentially as a different server. That's the cause protection and that's why we need two different terminals. Django running in here, view running in here. Okay, now we can run this. NPM, I'm just gonna do a little this to show you the options that come up. So NPM create feet at latest. Feet is a really nice manager that we're gonna be using. Type in front end here. Choose view. I'm JavaScript is fine. And then these are the commands that I mentioned that we need to do. So CD to front end, so front end, npm install, which will take a few moments. npm run dev, and now view is running. Click on that, there it is. And so now we can go, so view is stored in this front end folder that we've created. And then if we go to src there, there is our top, top layer of our view app. And there's a component, so if we go into that component and we change this count to other way around, and then we change that to uh, cat, cat in a bag, and then we go back to our actual app. There you go, cat in a bag, and then if I go cat in a house, you see it immediately updates, which is really nice and beat. And there we're adding by two, as we said. That's running as expected. Now continuing, now we actually want to start adding our real stuff. So we're going to add Pania, which is our global store that will store all of our state that different components will access. Really nice. And then view router, which is a way to add different paths here and navigate between because we're just deploying a single page app. So we, in, on itself, it's just essentially kind of one page, but we use view router to give us different URLs and the feeling of different pages. Okay, so we need to install view router. That's good. So go open up another terminal, but make sure you're in, always need to go when installing packages into where your view is actually installed, which for us is front end. So make sure you're in there. Otherwise you'll, it, will, it will install, but you won't actually install anything as in the command will run. And then go npm install, view router and Pania. Great, and now we will add them in. So we go to main.js, which is, it's an, actually, I'll slow down a little bit on the navigation so it's clearer. So go to front end and then go to main.js. This is, this mounts your view app into the, into the, into the page, if you like, if, in, in, it's the very top level. And we just paste over the top with this and I'll explain it. So here is router, that doesn't exist yet. We're gonna create that and auth that doesn't create, that's gonna be where our store is for storing auth authenticated details. And then we create an app here, we tell it to use these things so that they're registered globally so that any of our view components can access them. We're gonna set our CSRF token, we're gonna to call this right at the start when our view app loads, and then that will be stored in our Pinea store, which then our request to our Django backend can use. I wonder if that sounds complicated. It's actually a really, I think this is a really nice, simple implementation. Hopefully you'll see that uh, shortly. Now we're gonna create the router, go to your front end and then in SRC, create a new file called router.js and then just paste this in. These are the different routes and then these are the, we're, we're mapping the, the components here to the particular routes. This is quite similar to our URLs, analogous to our URLs file for Django. Okay, now we will update the app, the top level to use this router so we go app view here and get rid of this stuff we're not going to use any of this anymore and then copy this over and paste it in and this router view means that it will go to our router um, which is hooked in through our main.js and we can also delete this style here because we're not going to have them globally good now we create our first page if you like it's going to be an actual it's actually a view component with the concept of single page apps which we are using here a page doesn't really isn't really true but uh, for the user it will feel like a page so let's copy this and then go and we're going to create a folder here called pages in under src and then we're going to create a component called home.view and i'm going to choose to use the options api here with view you probably know with view 3 there are two ways to use if i show you some examples two syntaxes a bit confusing you can either, so this is one, this is for Hello World, you can use composition like this or options API like this. So two different ways of writing the same thing. I much prefer options, there's more code, but there's, as a result, there's more structure provided for you. This is much more manageable in a team, whereas you'd have to decide on your, how your team are going to structure things and come up with a kind of approach. I almost always use options API and there's some tools like ViewUse, which is 
really awesome, which only uses composition. But anyway, we'll, we'll be using options API. We are creating home and home is here. So let's copy and paste home in. Quick description. So here <laughs> we're using a little bit of, yeah, here we're hooking in some composable. So we're adding that Panea store, which is gonna be shared between. We're adding in the router so we can use it. Simple method to log out, which will then call a method which we're going to define because multiple components will probably want to use logout here in our auth store, which we haven't created yet. Here's the HTML. If you've seen view, I uh, React, I think this is much nicer than React's JSX. It's much this is much more HTML based. So if the users, if in in the auth store the user is authenticated, then we show the user. Otherwise, and then we let them log out. Otherwise, we say you're not logged in. Leave any comments or questions in down below. Happy, very happy to answer. So we'll create another page now. And which page is this? Login. So page here, create new file, and then login.view. Make sure we keep the capital. Make sure we keep the capital. Walk through, you'll probably recognize this. This is just a form, but then with a, some view here to run a particular function instead of the default submit when you click submit here. And then the view model here is, is a two-way sync to view the data here, and it keeps it updated. So whenever a user types, types something in here, our data here will be updated. And then when the user clicks login, we then will call the login method on all store, which we're gonna define in a second, send this data, the rest should be clear. Okay, moving on to register. This is a little more to it. And then we actually hook it up and we'll hook up auth and it will be clearer to you that this is quite a simple way to do things. So go into pages, register.view, paste this in. And if you look here, so register, a similar thing as login, except we're gonna be calling a register function, which is there. And then we're going to get this CSRF token. All the other, the only difference is all the other uh, asynchronous calls that we're doing are in auth, but here we're actually defining register in register. Just a preference. It would probably make sense to put this in auth as well, but it's good to show you this here as a kind of variation. This is the backend URL that is where Django is running, API register, which is API register there, which is where our front end is then calling to register the user, sending this data, and then Django including our cookies, such as our session token, which is critical for our, our auth, and then proceeding from there. And then using router here to push the user to the login page. Okay, now let's create the auth and a couple more things until we can actually run it. We're almost there. So now we're creating our Panea store. As you can see, final steps are coming up. So go to front end, here and then go into we're going to create another folder here called store but and then we'll create a javascript file here auth.js auth.js there and then we go down and copy and paste this code and i'll explain it again because we've been hooking up the components here for example use auth store here you import auth store here this is the same in login the same in register and this is where our panea store is and as you can see, this is our state. So this is shared between all components. And then these are our actions, our kind of asynchronous methods, if you like. And the, it is persist, this is set up as persistent. So what happens when this loads is we go to local storage here, which is a built-in JavaScript function. And that's local storage on the user's browser, sees if there is any state there called auth state. If there is, then we load that, which is stored as JSON, into our state. So that means that every time we refresh, we do this little check. Oh, is there anything in local storage? Is there auth state? Yes, okay, then we load it in. So, and then if you refresh the page again, that will repeat. Also need to store things in there. And so we have a function here called save state, which does the same thing. It sets auth state, which is there, storage state, as auth state into the local, into the user's browser. And doc that I wrote, hopefully makes that clearer. And then these are the different functions that we call set CSRF token. So this runs whenever our app loads in, like I did in main showed you. So it runs for the first time our app loads, which is what you want, not when moving between, that's just unnecessary. And then login, here's our login method. As you can see, we're getting our CSRF token here, which comes from here, which we go, this maybe looks a bit complicated. You could use packages to reduce this complexity. Don't worry, it essentially just goes and looks at the local cookie and that CSRF token and then gets it back, which is a string. Yeah, and then we'll set is authenticated here in the state if the user logs in successfully. Skipping through this, a similar thing here, if the user clicks log out, then it will set authenticated to false, save that state, 
then push them to login. Fetch user is slightly different, I suppose, because it goes to user and then we'll get user's data, give that data and then set this user to data and that this user is there. But then if they log out, it will then be set to null again to its default state. Hopefully that is clear. Okay, let's continue. We're, we're pretty much ready to run it. So let, final steps, we need to just go to our terminal again. Maybe open a new one, doesn't really matter. Make sure you're in your top end and then go python manage.py make migrations. No change directed, that's actually fine. And then migrate, cool. So we've applied all the migrations and made the database, which is there. And now let's run the servers. So I'll just do this from fresh. Just imagine you could, you've got them running already, but I'll just do it as if they've been closed for some reason in case you pick up on this later. So we run Django first, run the backend, python manage.py run server. That's running. Now we do the front end. So go make sure you get into CD front end, otherwise this won't work. And then go npm run dev. Okay, cool. So there is our login page. And this home page corresponds to our home view. As you can see, if we were to change this to welcome all, the hot module reload means it automatically updates. So, and let's test it out. Let's let's register. You're gonna need to go to register. We should probably have a nav bar here letting the users register, but we don't. As you can see, I've changed backgrounds. Here we are, go here to register, and let's enter, I've already registered this, so just t at tomdegan.com, password, and then we've got our servers running here, and register. Registration successful, please log in, and you see that auto navigation here on the register page, so this means after if the response is okay, then we wait a second and then push the person to the login. You could actually get rid of this timeout and just push them immediately. That might be nicer. And then now let's log in. So not to, but t at tomdecan.com. Log in. Let's just show you that how the session tokens that I've been describing in the cookies. So if we go here, application, you see the CSRF token. That's set. We set that CSRF token. So that's our token. And then we have that our session ID and that's stored in the database in Django in a compressed form. This is a really nice way of doing it because it's completely integrated within Django using Django's uh, system, which actually, let me see if I can show you it. Let's go just into our database. This is all extra. Congrats, we've set up our, our server so far, but I'll just show you for more detail. So if we go into the database and open up our SQLite database, there is our database and we'll actually see the object we've created. So tables, and then we go to user there are two users. I created one before this. There's t at tomdecan.com. And these are the, the default Django. We can see they're both active. When I joined, I'm the default Django columns for the Django user. And then if we go to the actual session ID, which is here, this is in Django session and inbuilt. This is the inbuilt session authentication for Django. It's really easy to use. And we're just hooking into it rather than setting up tokens, for example. So let's open that table. And there is our session. Obviously, it's unreadable by a human but Django decodes it for you and then that gives you an, a user ID, which then Django can then use to look up your other table to use it and get the data. And we do that, for example, in our Django backend. Uh, let's go to our views. Uh, here, we go request and then get the user and then it's authenticated and then we go request. So that means going to the session, then doing this lookup to the username and then to the email. This is really efficient, just a nice way to do it. Simple, fast and using what's already built for us. Another thing, so we're looking up local storage here, and there's our auth state. So you see there is our user details, so that when we refresh the user, that, that gets reloaded into our Panea state. And so that's going to local storage. And looking, is there any key there called auth state, which for us it is here. And then if it is loaded into our state, which then the, our view component can use globally. And then log out, and you can see we've set, it sets user is null, is authenticated false, just because here in the logout method that we call in log in logout.view. If the response is okay, we then go null, null. So hope that's clear. This is a really nice foundation. Feel free to subscribe. I'm producing more content about Django, View. I'm actually doing something about React now and AI stuff. Here are a few more videos. All the best to you.